The religious conflicts in Nigeria have claimed 10,000 lives in the last four years and destroyed properties worth millions of dollars. Over 300 Christian churches have been destroyed and 250,000 people displaced. In November 2002, the Muslim faithful took to the street in protest over an article published in a daily newspaper concerning the event of the Miss World Beauty Contest to be hosted by Nigeria. The article stated that if the Prophet Muhammad was alive, he would have admired and married one of the girls in the competition. Muslims considered this a blasphemy against Islam. As a result, they took to the street and they vent their anger on innocent citizens, more especially the Christians. The attack took place at about 10 in the morning where most of the workers had gone to work and uh, the children and the women were the victim of attack. They just get into anybody's house, force the door open, take whatever they can take away from there. The ones they cannot take, they destroy. And whoever they're able to meet, they still murder, more especially a Christian. The church was affected. Properties were looted. Nursery and primary school was vandalized, completely destroyed down. The fence too was broken down in pieces and that resulted to the burning of our parish house there and the killing of our parish priest. So they beat him, caught him with cutlasses and hit him with hard stick and even iron. So he was badly wounded. He was in the hospital for about three months. He died later on due to the wounds he received. Due to the crisis that took place, a lot of Christians were dislodged from where they were used in to stay because they were afraid if they continue to stay, if there is any further crisis, they might be killed. The Christians are forced to sell their properties. Right now there is a church the Muslims are trying to buy within this environment. And of course when they buy it, they always convert it to a mosque. Actually we have started uh, rebuilding the church that was badly damaged. But in the meantime we changed the classroom into a temporary church, a place of worship. Where we live to come here and worship God, at least some trek up to 10 kilometers. Some will have to drive as far as 15 kilometers in order to get to this place. We find it difficult to live in that place. And moreover, worshiping God here is a challenge. And I think it's a test of our faith. No matter the level of persecution, that will not deter us from what we will achieve. Normally, to follow Christ is not an easy task. Nigeria, the most populous country in Africa, is inhabited by approximately 140 million people. The country is divided by ethnic and religious differences. 60% of the population is Muslim, living mostly in the north of the country. Christians mainly inhabit the south. The introduction of the Sharia law 10 years ago in 12 states provoked a series of riots throughout the country. In August 2004, the Islamic government in the Zamfara state threatened to demolish all churches considered as illegal structures, close all businesses belonging to Christians during Muslim prayers, and enforce a new law against clothing that is not compliant with Islamic law. The constitution of Nigeria guarantees our freedom, but the, in actual fact on the ground, that freedom may not always be available. We have the situation, for example, of the Sharia law in some of those states. We are still debating it up till now. 
We believe it is against the Nigerian constitution. In chapter 4 of this constitution, which came into force in 1999, uh, we have a very elaborate provision relating to freedom of religion. And it says that any individual or even group of individuals have the right to worship or belong to any religious they like. And they also have the right to change their religion. But you see, one of the biggest problems we have had with the interpretation of this particular provision is that the constitution also gives each state, House of Assembly, the authority and the right to organize these affairs in the state in a manner that suits the local circumstances, the local traditions, and local peculiarities of that particular state. So that is what we now refer to as the Sharia crisis. Some state governments have gone ahead to ban the sale, the consumption of alcohol in their states. And this involves every person, whether you're a Muslim or whether you're a Christian. They have also gone ahead to even regulate the issue of transportation to say that there must be separate vehicular transportation for women and a separate vehicular transportation for men. They have also gone ahead to insist that men and women cannot attend the same educational institutions. And this has also gone into the issue of mode of dressing. They are insisting that everybody must dress in accordance with Islamic principles and Islamic law. We now have what I call an extreme form of extremism, an extreme form of fanaticism, an extreme form of pernicious violation of the type of religious freedom that has been guaranteed under the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. has also led to a, a situation where people have had to uproot their businesses and relocate to some other states because the conditions in these states where the Sharia law is, is being practiced is no longer conducive for them to even do their business. It's no longer conducive for them to even practice their religion. And some Christians in Zafara have told me how difficult it is for them to even get certificates of occupancy uh, uh, in relation to their existing buildings. They have difficulty in renewing them. And they are also insisting that it is very, very difficult to even get a plot of land to even build churches. In September 2004, about 60 members of a Muslim sect known as the Talibans attacked police stations in the towns of Bama and Gwoza in the Borno state, then carried out raids on Christian communities, killing people, raping women and burning down homes. There are some parts of Nigeria where there is a dominant Islamic uh, regime which is uh, largely controlled by many of these young men who have studied in Iran, studied in, in Al-Azhar, studied in, uh, under Libya. When a Nigerian gets a scholarship and when he goes there he is put in an institution where he is brainwashed. Of course he comes back in Muhajadin and in that kind of place, they are trained, probably, to see within Islam the, also the element of, uh, of uh, armed conflict. And so when they come back, what, it does, what does happen then is that they find it easy, it becomes easy for them to begin to mobilize armed kind of movements. Allah. The recent series of attacks carried out by Islamic fundamentalists in the USA and elsewhere.